What? Stop pinching me. I am wearing green. Can't you see that I'm wearing green? Oh my goodness. What is up with people? Wow. Hey, everybody. I'm Chris Wataco, and it is St. Patrick's Day. And how are you doing today? Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. If this is your first time at Live After Five, my name is Chris Swataco, and I lead a bunch of different ministries with the help of other people as well. And uh, just say welcome to you. Or maybe you've watched this for the 50th time. We thank you for you as well, because we need you uh, to uh, like the videos and share the videos and um, appreciate your comments and postings and Yes, please post uh, where you're from if you're watching, uh, whether you're watching live or you're watching on a rerun, appreciate you so much. And so uh, today is uh, an interesting day. And of course, it had to be a day from church too, which was wonderful to, uh, to be able to celebrate St. Patrick. Now, I'll be honest with you and tell you that before God gave me this message, um, I really did not know much about St. Patrick. Do, do, you, do you know much about St. Patrick? Maybe if you're Irish, you do, but I didn't really know much about him. Um, as a kid, I remember that you were supposed to wear green or get pinched. And so I'm not and still, still even after studying about him, I still don't know what that was about. Um, and as an adult, uh, I grew up and I knew that it was celebrating a saint's life. And uh, it was also about Ireland, but uh, it kind of morphed into hearing about parades and parties and people drinking lots of green beer. And, and that's kind of what I know about it. You didn't have to be Irish. Um, so who is St. Patrick and why do we celebrate this day, which of course is his birthday? Well, St. Patrick is known for taking the gospel Christianity to all of Ireland um, around 500 AD, something that would change the country forever and the world. I mean, something definitely to be celebrated. You know, I don't know if you've noticed, and you probably have, you've been a Christian long enough time, that Christmas and Easter, um, which is also supposed to be a day of celebrating um with Christ focused uh, celebration, you know, the birth of Christ with Christmas. Uh, he's our savior, of course, uh, his death and resurrection on the cross uh, and, and, and dying for our sins. So Easter is about that. And Christmas is about his birth. And, uh, and of course we want eternal life. And, and all of that is about Christianity. Those are our holidays as Christians, right? But the world the enemy has managed to twist it and distort it. Um, it. The enemy has changed the meanings and the purpose of Jesus towards being more about self-focused pleasure. Um, and of course, I'm not surprised. Are you surprised that the enemy is doing this? I mean, you know, he is the author of evil, right? And he's, his goal is to distract. His goal is to uh, to take your eyes off of Christ. Your goal, his goal is to make it about you. And that's what he does. But a lot of times we don't even need his help. We're really good at making things about us in general. Are you? Do you sometimes uh, get off that path as well? And even though it's Christmas, you have like 50 Santa Clauses. And one year, many, many years ago, um, I was very convicted uh, this is probably about 20 years ago. Um, I was very convicted that I had more Santa Clauses than I had anything about Christ in my house. And I don't really know what changed it. Maybe it was a message I heard. Maybe it was my walk with the Lord. But I was just noticing that if somebody were to have come into my house at Christmas, would they know that I was a Christian? Same thing with Easter. You know, would they come into my house and and know that I love the Lord, that I that that I knew that Jesus died for me, that he 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 hung on a cross for my sins and then he died and on the third day he rose again so that I could have eternal life with him? Like, would they know that or would they just know that I really like chocolate? You know, um, I, I don't know. Um, if Christ's birth wasn't remembered or valued correctly, then his life would have no meaning to this lost world. If Christ's death for our sins and and his rising from the dead, uh, it would be is overshadowed by Easter bunnies and chocolate, then it's forgotten. 
And today, if St. Patrick's Day is not celebrated because St. Patrick's obedience of sharing Christ with all of Ireland, then parades and river, uh, rivers of green is all that we care about. We would not know the importance of how when one person shares how Christ saves them, how one person shared how Christ changed them, how Christ healed them and, and restored them, and how they too could have eternal life. This is what Patrick did. Now let me do, I, I did a little bit of research and I'm gonna tell you there's there's a lot of it, some of it's secular, some of it's Christian about his life and some of it's true and some of it they don't know about or whatever. But the things that are true that have been proven, I'm gonna share what I've learned and I think it's amazing. And it changes everything about today in the way that I had learned about it. And it's definitely a day of celebration. So we know that Patrick was born in Britain uh, in March 17th, 387 AD, uh, from where we call Scotland today. At the time, it was called Roman Brit Britain, which meant the Romans were actually controlling uh, Britain, and eventually they would exit. And so, but this is where he was born. So he was Scottish, okay? And when he was 16 years old, he was actually kidnapped and taken to Ireland uh, to be a slave. And, and so while he was there, um, we know based on history that he did not, uh, he knew of Christ, but he did not have a relationship with him or have any of the Lord's power uh, working through him. Um, he would escape Britain, uh, escape back to Britain. Um, and at some point in time, he would later return. Now, this time, though, when he ended up back in Ireland, he had accepted the Lord as his Savior. And he went back this time, and what a risk. I mean, would you go back to the place that puts you in chains? Would you go back to the place that could do it again? So this time he went back, but with the authority and the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, just think about that. What a difference, right? What a difference to, you know, go in your power versus God's power. A lot of times I think in life, that that's what we try to do. We we want to do, accomplish great things. You know, we want to be to do great things. And uh, and often we, we, we try to do them in our ability and by our will instead of God's will. I love the scripture, Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, right? You can do anything. And this is what Patrick did. He knew that he could do all things because Christ was going to strengthen him. Christ was going to be with him. Christ was going to work through him. And Christ was going to protect him. Look at the power, how it changed his life when he accepted Christ. Look at the power of learning and growing in the Lord and how it changed his life to where he was willing to go back to this place because he really was starting to feel conviction from the Lord I've got to go do this. Now, some believe that while he was a slave, um, that he began to feel compassion for the people and that he realized that his father, who was, by the way, a deacon in the church, right? Um, and others were actually right. I think that, you know, because he was a young man, a lot of times in our youth is when, you know, you might've gone to church as a child. Uh, for some people, they've accepted Christ when they were little, but didn't know what they were doing. You become a youth and you think you know everything. I was one of those people, uh, you know, you don't need Christ the way maybe your family has Christ or God, and you don't want to follow the way they're doing it because you feel like it's a bunch of rules. Yak, 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 yak. Even adults feel this way, you know, that they, they, I don't want anything to do with the church. I remember being dragged to church. And so Patrick was no different, no different. And look what, I love this. Look what had to happen in his life. Look at how low it had to get. Look at how, uh, that he had no ability to get out of his situation. Like he was taken to this country to be a slave and look what had to happen to wake him up. For some of you, you've been in that same place. You've been in such dark places because that's what it took to wake you up. Maybe somebody's watching this right now and that's where you're at. You're in that dark, dark place, emotionally, physically, financially, whatever it is. And God is trying to wake you up. So he's allowed these things to happen to get you to go, wait a minute, I, I need Jesus. Well, this is what happened to Patrick. So they say that he accepted Christ. He realized that his dad was right all this time and, and uh, that others were right in the church all this time. And he decided, to, you know what, I, I, I need the Lord in my life too. 
But he also supposedly they say that he he realized too that hmm, maybe Ireland also needs Christ because if my dad was right and God is right and 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 I need the Lord, I need my life change. Well, surely Ireland needs their life change because he'd been there. He'd seen what they were doing. He saw the, the 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 anger that was there, the hostility that was there, the the fear that was there, the self-focus and fighting all the time. He saw that and wanted to make a difference and knew that if Christ could change his life, Christ could change their life. This reminds me of Matthew, Matthew 9, 35 through 38. This is what Jesus this is about Jesus and his compassion. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, just like Patrick, because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. He said, then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest field. Patrick knew that he needed first accepting Christ, but number two, he felt compelled by the Lord. I gotta go, I gotta go help these people who don't know the Lord. But he also knew that it would start with him, but it was also going to require that he lead others to Christ, who could also lead others to Christ and also lead others to Christ. And but it would start with him. And then like here it says in this scripture, Jesus had his disciples. He said, look, guys, there's a lot, a lot to do. There's a lot of people who need you, but we don't have a lot of workers. So we need to be training people and discipling people and growing people. This is the value of church. This is the value of Bible study. This is the value of ministry because we want to help grow people in the Lord so they will in turn reach people for the Lord as well. Patrick would convert the Irish to Christianity. And you want to know one, one of the cool ways that he did it? Who knows what that is? That is a shamrock, or I say clover. Now, when I was a kid, we would look for clovers that had four leaves because four leaves meant it was good luck. But of course, I don't believe in luck. I believe in Christ. So that's all I really knew about a shamrock. Well, Patrick... Uh, when he was in, or St. Patrick, so we probably are going to call him St. Patrick, but when he was in Ireland and he was sharing the gospel, the clover was everywhere. And so he would pick up a clover and he would use it to share the Trinity. Isn't that cool? That he used the tools that were around him. I mean, I think about over the years, what other people do, like, you know, the candy cane, I don't know if you notice that, the modern day candy cane you use at Christmas has a great story that leads people to Christ. Look it up sometime. Or maybe the, the sign of the fish, you know, that little swerve thing, that little, that people use that to find out who the other Christians were. And it was a sign, it's like a code for other Christians. Today, I, I love it that I can just feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in someone and just know that they're a believer like me. Um, uh, other uh, people use, you know, different, uh, different uh, maybe a song or, or maybe an illustration. Um, what do you use? Uh, some of you who, who do share your faith and, and talk to people about the Lord, what do you use? Um, I wrote my own personal tracks, uh, different stories in my life that where Christ impacted me and, and I print them out and give them away. Of course, you can, you can buy tracks too. And, and they tell the gospel and they ha usually have a cute cover on the front. Um, I also have flagged in my Bible, the Romans road, and it just talks about the, the steps on how to come to Christ using the book of Romans. Um, and some people draw on a piece of paper, the great bridge illustration. Have you ever heard of that? It's literally you draw it in front of someone and it shares with them how we, we need to come to Christ and what that looks like. I'll put in the uh, chat uh, after I'm done, um, the link to that and check it out because I think you might want to use it in your own walk with the Lord. Christ tells us that we need to be prepared. 
We need to be ready. That's what Patrick was. Whenever he was there, with every opportunity, he knew that God had saved him from being enslaved, that God got him out of that situation, got him back to Britain, got him right with him, and then started equipping him and empowering him and, and giving him the confidence and, and the protection to go back to this country because that's what it was going to take. He had already been there. He saw the need. He saw the people. He didn't come back with an arrogant Ah, I'm going to, these people are stupid. He came back with love and gentleness because he felt the same compassion that Christ feels when he sees our lost world. First Peter 3.15, but in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord is holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks for a reason for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and respect. Patrick would spend the rest of his life leading people to Christ, training others up, starting ministries, and discipling others. They say at the time of his death, 461 AD, he was around 74, he had started over 300 churches and schools and baptized over 100,000 people. Now, I don't know how you keep track of that, and I'm guessing that he had a lot of other people that also uh, but there's some pretty powerful men uh, on in the I, I I see on YouTube and and reels and whatever that are doing, you know, they're seeing baptisms of thousands of people. Um, they're seeing lives change, and so definitely in the the all the years of his life, in those I don't know how many years, 50, 60 years that he was in Ireland, surely he could have reached that hundred thousand. But I think to myself. I don't, I'm not saying this to you because you're like, well, I guess I got to go baptize people, Chris. You know, or I guess I need to go start a couple hundred churches. I just think you need to share your faith and let God use you and grow you and expand your territory. As Pastor Freddie loves the, the prayer of Jabez, right? Um, are you even doing that, right? It started with one. Today, I think about people like Florence Nightingale and Charles Spurgeon, George Washington Carver. Do you know much about George Washington Carver? I've spoke about him before. Like his life, he was single. Like Florence Nightingale was single. And how they changed the world through, uh, some of them were Christians and they were, like Charles Spurgeon was a minister, whereas some were like nurses, like Florence Nightingale or, or George Washington Carver was an inventor, a teacher. Then you got Annie Armstrong and Lottie Moon, which are missionaries, Martin Luther. Think about these people who just, they felt just the, the heaviness of a lost world. And they just said, Lord, I want to be used by you. True celebration of St. Patrick's Day, it's life or Ireland to me, it's really not about St. Patrick. It's not about the country. It's not about the Irish it's not about the person. It's about the gospel. It's a day to be encouraged and affirmed if you are sharing the gospel in whatever way that looks like, whether it's by the way you live, by the way you spend your time, by the way you spend your money, by your attitude, by your choices, by your love of other people, by how you serve in your church and how, you're, how you treat people at your job and, and how you treat your neighbors. Whatever way that is, I want you to be encouraged and affirm that you're doing what God wants you to do because of your personal relationship with God, because you accepted Christ as your savior. You knew you were a sinner. You knew you needed forgiveness for your sins. And you knew the only way to get to, to God was for Jesus. So you accepted him just like Patrick did. And then you started growing in your faith. You started growing in your walk. You went to church, went to Bible study got mentored, discipled by somebody older than you, you learned, you grew, and you had not forgotten what Christ, where Christ found you. Now, some of you, you were young, you're like, it wasn't this great, you know, whoa, thing that happened, Chris, but yet every day, God does something for you. Have you forgotten? Right? Some of you, you said, no, I, I don't ever, I never, ever take it for granted. I never, uh, ever want to forget what he does for me every day. You've not forgotten what he's done for you on the cross. You, you have not forgotten that you need the Lord every day, all day, every minute of every day, that you do not try to do things in your power, your ability, that in the least second of a second of a second, you're going, God, help, Jesus, help. Because you've been living this life following him. 
You have not forgotten that only by his power, you're able to even share your faith at all. Because in your ability, uh, but in his ability, everything. You have not forgotten that until Christ returns, you have a lot of work to do. We all do. So keep the course. Stay focused. Stay available. Isaiah 6, 8 says, And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. Here I am, send me. It's also a day that's not about St. Patrick. It's not about any of these other people that I mentioned. It's not about the country or the Irish. It's also a day to be reminded and convicted for what you're not doing or not doing that well. Okay. And let me just say, I fall short every day. There's things that I need to do better. I, I see my ebb and flow. I see where I do really, really well for a season and then I'm not so good for a season. I'm sharing my faith a lot, then I'm not sharing my faith a lot. I, I The enemy whispers or I'm tired or this or that. Hey, so it's a holiday not only to celebrate that when I am doing things right for God and he's happy with me and he's thankful for me and I feel that thankfulness and I'm doing what he's asked me to do and I'm being obedient, but it's also a day to remind me, okay, Chris, you need to step it up, okay? There's some places, uh, eh, right? Because maybe you have forgotten where he found you. And maybe you need him to remind you. You have forgotten what he did for you on the cross and that your sins are forgiven. But there are consequences to being a, being disobedient um, as a Christian. And, you know, a lot of times he allows things to happen to remind you of what he did on the cross for you. Um, because you, you've forgotten that you need the Lord every day, that you need to seek him every day. Now you, you kind of try to oh, just do it on my own. I really, I'm good. I don't really need him. I'm good. I got it. You know, I, I'll, I'll, you know, God let you go take care of the people that are really struggling, the people that are really not doing well, the sick people, you go help them. You know, I'm good. I can take care of this on my own. No, no, we all need him every day. We don't need to try to figure it out. We don't need to figure out our purpose. Our purpose is him. Or maybe we need to remember this day because you have forgotten about his power and only through it, working through you, can you live fully for the Lord. And because you may have forgotten that until Christ returns, because you've let the world speak louder than Christ, allowing Santa Claus and bunnies and green beer to have your focus and it's become more about you, please know it's never been about you and it's never been about me. So it's time, y'all. It's time. It's time to get off the couch, out of that chair, and get down on your knees and confess where you fall short, asking for forgiveness or asking for the Lord into your life right now. And say out loud, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, send me. I want to be like St. Patrick, and I want to share the gospel with the world. Help me to be the one to someone. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again. Thank you for, for Patrick and the work that he did and his heart for you. And Lord, thank you that a day that has been twisted and turned and distorted by the enemy to make it uh, just about a party that Lord, we can be reminded as Christians that it's about celebrating that from salvation uh, to our walk with you, Lord, to sharing our faith that we are, that's what we're celebrating. Thank you for those that are listening that are doing exactly what you've asked them to do. I pray you're with them. Give them courage, give them strength, give them boldness to be able to speak when they need to speak. And if they have a shamrock laying around on the ground, they pick it up and share the gospel. And Lord, for that person watching this is struggling. It's just like, Chris, I, I don't even know the last time I opened up my Bible. I don't even know the last, I don't even know if I even have a Bible or I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to even share my faith. Lord, I pray that you would give them a story. Just have them tell somebody what you did for them. 
And if that person who's not watching doesn't, I mean, it's watching, but doesn't know, you can know right now, all you have to do is believe that Jesus is the son of God and that he died on the cross for your sins, that you're a sinner and you need forgiveness for your sins, asking Jesus into your heart and professing that right now and asking him into your heart, believing in him, you are and will be with the rest of us in eternity. Just follow him. Find a church. Find a Bible. And if you don't have one, please contact me. Have them contact me, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for another time to hear your word. Thank you for the reminder. And thank you for all those that are living around us for you, Lord, and all those that have come before us and the work they've done and the place they play. They paid a, a card for us, that those pavers that they, they've set before us so that we could do what we're doing. We ask us to pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Sorry, I got a little fumbled up with my words there. <laughs> Sometimes I think too much when I'm teaching. Want to remind you? Of a few things that are coming up, a few little commercials. We have our Labor Day retreat, and uh, I just, I just can't tell you, can't tell you how important this is. Um, deep waters, Labor Day. This is our tenth year anniversary, our forty fifth year that the retreat's been going on. We have a lot of great people that are working really, really hard, praying for you, preparing for you, planning for you, and. Um, I pray that this is something God wants you to come. He wants you to bring friends with you. Um, it is a life-changing weekend, labordaysingles.org. Um, if you want to start a singles ministry, grow a singles ministry, grow a women's ministry, um, if you go to the singlesnetwork.org or Chris Wataka Ministries, uh, you will find the resources that you need to do those things. And I just want to help you to be able to grow personally and to be able to help others. Um, if you uh, want to get a Bible study, I have Bible studies for sale on my website. If you cannot afford one, you let me know. We would definitely want to help you out. Also, the intentional relationship study is on there, and it is a life-changing study. We are seeing God move incredible in that study. Um, also, I'm getting ready for our cruise, the Alaskan cruise. It's coming up. There is some spots left for some single ladies if you're still wanting to go. And then we already, we've got our next cruise, which is going to be the 9th through the 15th of uh, February of next year going to be going back to the Caribbean for singles and so that information will be on my website soon also next month in the month of April I'll be going back to the UK and to Greece to do ministry missions and so I appreciate your prayers and support as well as I'll be on the road and be doing live at five from various places on the road and so that'll be fun and uh and if you are interested in bringing me to your church or you want to support the ministry so I can keep doing be on the prayer team all of that is on the website and would love and appreciate your support so with that we another half hour has gone by. It goes by so quickly, but thank you for watching. Thank you for praying for me um, and believing in what I'm doing. And uh, just couldn't do it without you. And uh, our team couldn't do it without your prayers. So praise God. Till the next time, everybody. And happy ah, St. Patrick's Day. I, I didn't have a shamrock mug. This is the closest I could get to green.